Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called The Mistletoe, an adaptation of a Norse myth written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. The Mistletoe Once upon a time, the Norse goddess Frigg was tossing and turning in her bed. She lived in Asgard with the other gods and goddesses in a golden palace. But despite the wonder around her, her sleep was plagued by bad dreams. Balder, she called out, alone in the darkness of her room, tangled in her sheets. Balder, no! Balder was her son, and he was the god of light and hope and happiness. He wasn't as wise as his father Odin, or as mighty as his half-brother Thor, but he was kind, and everyone loved him. In Frigg's dreams, Balder kept getting hurt. In one dream, he was hit by a spear. In another, he fell down a mountain and broke his leg. And then he was eaten by a shark in a shipwreck, or fell in thorns, and on and on. Frigg couldn't get any rest. When the goddess woke up, she was drenched in a cold sweat. Her dreams had seemed so real, and because of the magic of Asgard, she knew that there was a chance they were more than dreams. There was a chance that they were visions of the future. She went to Odin on his throne in the Grand Hall. The Allfather, as Odin was called, was wrapped in furs, a leather patch over his missing eye, and his good eye stared out with a brilliant gaze. Frigg! he called out when she entered the hall. His voice boomed through the golden palace. What's wrong? You look like you saw a ghost. I saw many ghosts, all of my son Balder, Frigg said back. I had dream after dream that he was hurt by all kinds of things. I don't know what to do. Odin thought for a long while, his face lined with concern. He, too, knew that dreams in Asgard were often more than they seemed. I'll think about this, he said finally, but I share your concern. If you think of a solution, by all means, take whatever steps necessary. Frigg left and went back to her room, continuing to worry. She thought of Thor, who was nearly invincible and wished Balder had that strength, but that was beyond even her power. The day passed slowly, with the goddess starting and throwing out a hundred ideas, none of them good enough to save her son. When a cook later brought her dinner, he found her at her table, tears running down her beautiful face. My lady Frigg, the cook said, setting down a steaming bowl of stew. What's wrong? It's Balder, she said. I had dreams of him being hurt by all kinds of things. What if these are visions? What can I do to keep him safe? The cook placed a hand over his heart. Well, my lady, he said, I can't speak for everyone, but I vow to never hurt so much as a hair on Baldur's head. Thank you, Frigg said. That's always good to hear. The cook left and Frigg sat for a moment, and then her face lit up. A vow, she said to herself, a smile coming over her face like the sun burning through rain clouds. A vow. I'll get a vow from everything to never hurt Balder. That way, he'll be as invincible as even Thor. Being a goddess, Frigg could travel in an instant, and she could speak to anything, be it a person or an animal or a cloud in the sky or a stone in the earth. Remembering her dreams, she started with the humans and asked them to vow to never hurt her son. All of the humans agreed, because Balder was the god of light and love and made their lives better every day. After that, Frigg went to all of the animals. She spoke to the swimming sharks in the sea and the poison snakes of the swamps and the hungry lions of the plains and all the rest. Like the humans, they all loved Balder and agreed to never do him any harm. Next, Frigg went to nature itself. The clouds promised to never strike him with lightning, 
and the seas promised to never drown him in their depths. The mountains promised he could never slip on their stones, and even fire itself promised to never burn him. With every vow, Frigg felt better and better. She traveled all over Asgard and Earth and got a vow from every spear and sprout and man and mouse. In the end, everything that existed vowed to never harm Balder. Or at least, so Frigg thought. Deep in the forests, small and delicate as lace, was the mistletoe. It was a spidery green plant, barely thicker than grass, and it was so delicate that Frigg didn't even consider that it could be dangerous. So, she ignored it. The goddess returned to Asgard happy, and that night, she slept soundly and had nothing but sweet dreams. When Balder found out about all the vows that had been made, he decided to test it out for himself. Thor, he said, calling over to the burly god of thunder. I want you to try and hit me with your hammer. Thor's eyebrows bunched up in a tangle. Are you mad, brother? My hammer can level mountains. Well, just a light hit then, on my foot maybe. All right, growled Thor hefting his mighty magic hammer. They're your toes. He grunted and swung. The hammer howled like a winter wind and slammed into Balder's foot hard enough to shatter the stone he was standing on. But Balder didn't even feel it. It worked, he said. It worked, Thor agreed, clapping his brother on the back. Happy to know you're safe. (laughs) Me too agreed Balder, smiling wide and bright. The word got around about Balder's new invincibility, and it became a game among the gods. They would jump out and slash at him with swords or throw spears or push him off cliffs and then laugh when he bounced back unharmed. In time, even Frigg stopped worrying. But not everyone was happy. Loki, the weaselly trickster god, was jealous. He lived to cause trouble and hated when anyone else was the center of attention. Balder was already loved by everyone on Asgard and Earth, and now he was the focus of this new game. Oh, look, I'm Balder, Loki would sneer to himself. I'm so perfect and nothing will hurt me. La, 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 it makes me sick. The trickster god would watch on while the others laughed and played, and he grew more and more bitter. The jealousy in his heart turned black and sunken like a rotten fruit, and he knew he had to make Balder pay for being so perfect. So one night, when the gods and goddesses of Asgard were having a party, he made his move. It was just after they had finished a feast and all of the residents of Asgard gathered in a circle around Balder. All right, the Shining God said. Give me your best shot. Thor laughed and threw his hammer with all his might. It rang like a gong on Balder's chest and then fell back to the ground, leaving the god unscathed. Others threw stones or set fires or used their powers to summon bolts of lightning and raging horses. It was a wild, swirling mess and Balder stood in the middle of it, smiling and laughing, with not so much as a scratch on his skin. Only one god looked like he wasn't having a good time. His name was Hodor, and he was one of Balder's brothers and the god of warriors. Unfortunately, Hodor was blind, his eyes bound in a band of cloth. What's wrong, Hodor? Loki asked, whispering in his ear. Bah, I can't join the game, Hodor said. When I was younger, I could have shot an arrow better than anyone, but now my eyes have failed me. I'd have liked to shoot at Brother Balder and show my skill without hurting him, but I wouldn't know which way to aim. Loki smiled wickedly. It was just the opportunity he had been waiting for. Oh, I can help with that, Loki said. I'll guide your hand and you can fire the shot. That would be wonderful, Hodor said. I'd love to bend a bow again. 
I'll grab a bow and be right back, Loki said. He ran to his room where he had his own hunting bow at the ready. Then he went under his bed where he had something special he'd been working on. Where is it? Where is it? He said, pulling out furs and horns and trinkets stolen from Thor. Ah, here we go. He drew out a long, slender box and set it on the bed. With a sly grin, he flipped open the lid. Inside was an arrow made of slender stems all woven together, sharpened to a dagger's point. The arrow was a simple thing, but it was made of mistletoe, the little plant that Frigg hadn't asked to keep Balder safe, and so the only thing in all the realms that could hurt him. Loki cackled like a witch and brought the bow and mistletoe arrow back to Hodor. People were still laughing and taking turns throwing things at Balder, watching them bounce off harmlessly. Hodor, Loki said, are you ready to shoot? Hodor took the bow and knocked the arrow. It feels good to pull a bow again, he said. Will you aim me, friend Loki? Loki took his shoulders and turned him, adjusting his arm slightly until the arrow was aimed directly at Baldur's heart. You're ready, the trickster said, barely holding in his laughter. Baldur, Hodor cried with delight. Take this. He let the arrow fly and it zipped through the air. Baldur turned with a smile, but the smile disappeared as the mistletoe sank into his chest. The god staggered and fell over. The arrow shot clean through his heart. Hodor, cried Frigg. What have you done? What? Hodor stammered, unable to see. What happened? I just shot an arrow. I was just playing the game. It was a mistletoe arrow, Thor bellowed. How did you not know? It would have to be specially made. Well, someone else gave it to me. I didn't make it. Who would do such a thing? Then, with dawning realization, Thor, Odin, and Frigg all answered at the same time as Hodor. Loki! The gods raced off to find Loki and bring him to justice for his deadly prank. But Frigg stayed behind. She held her son and cried, and her tears the tears of a goddess dripped down onto the mistletoe. When they hit the slender green branches, her magic froze them into place. They stuck there, and they shone like berries made of pearl, berries that all mistletoe plants still carry to this very day. My son, she said, smoothing his hair. Hold on! Frigg turned then to Hela, the dark and mysterious goddess of death. Hela, she said, please let my son come back to the world of the living. Hela turned and looked at Frigg and Balder. She felt bad for the goddess, but she had rules to follow. Still, she knew Balder was well-loved, so she made a deal. First, she said that if everyone in the world cried a tear for Balder, she would bring him back right away. Balder was so beloved that when they found out about the accident, everyone shed a tear. Truly, from the sharks in the sea to the birds in the sky, everyone cried. Everyone except Loki. When that didn't work, Hela made a different deal. In some time, after the great war the gods and goddesses called Ragnarok, Balder would be returned to Earth. He would once more be the god of light and hope and happiness, and his kindness would spread all around the world. In the meantime, Hela would keep him safe. He would sit by her side in the underworld, and he would be a light in that dark and hallowed place. It wasn't perfect, but still, Frigg smiled, knowing that her son would soon be whole again. After that, the mistletoe apologized. It too made a vow to never hurt Balder again. Frigg embraced the little plant, sorry she had ignored it and declared that from that day on it should be a symbol of peace and love. And some say that's why, around Christmas time, people hang mistletoe around their homes, and also why some couples will kiss when they find themselves cuddled beneath it.
The end. Thanks for listening.